In this video of Code G, I'm going to be continuing with the first unit in uh, statistics. And um, <clears throat> last time that you know we had concluded, um, we had distinction between descriptive and inferential statistics. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to do is talk about enumerative and analytical studies. Um, <clears throat> It's important to understand um, and it's important to rather, I should say, note that uh, the distinction between analytical and enumerated studies is something that your book gives in quite a bit of detail. However, um, it's given in a very theoretical manner and um, the kind of examples that they've given there are, I personally feel a little unnecessary. So I'm going to motivate the distinction between analytical and enumerated studies in a slightly different manner. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, the concept is the same, right? So the first thing is first uh, is that it's important to understand the distinction between these two studies because um, how you approach the particular question under each of these studies is is distinct from each other, and it's important to note that distinction right at the beginning of the study rather than you know you realizing it later because the entire way in which you do the analysis is kind of you know. Uh, contingent upon which type of study it is. Now, as you know, um, is obvious, they are both done with very different objectives. An enumerative study is is focused on obtaining you know information about um, and taking action on specific items within a sampling frame, right? So, in an enumerative study, the sampling frame is very well defined. The purpose of the study is identified. It's not ambiguous. Elements of the population are well defined. Population can be an existing finite population. It could be, um, you know, something that you define as part of your uh, this thing. So the point is that it's it's about understanding or studying the sample to get to the inference about a population, right? And in this discussion, there's a sampling frame, which is a list of the sample points to be collected. So my point, I mean, not my point, but the point of an enumerative um, study is that your question and your population of interest are both very well defined, right? For the, you know, example of this is that in a batch of bulbs, let's say, you are um, to know whether or not to reject or accept a batch of bulbs to make this decision you take specific samples from this batch of bulbs and you see whether they're working or you know working in good condition or not and depending upon your answer uh, or depending upon you know your sample you take it a call on whether or not to keep this batch or not so you have a well-defined sampling frame which is um, you know samples from that particular batch of bulbs you have the you know well-defined population which is that entire batch of bulbs and the goal is not to characterize how the sample is being picked the goal is to um, you know answer a question based upon a specific sample and a specific population so the statistical inference made from the sample data is applied to the rest of the population for example if you find that you know the sample that you've taken is consisting of bad bulbs you say okay no i'm going to conclude that most of the bulbs in this sample are bad in this uh, population are bad in this batch are bad and hence i'm not going to accept the batch similarly if they're okay or if they're in good working condition you can reasonably say that uh, you know most of the bulbs in this batch are actually good and hence uh, you will accept the batch a 100% sample of the units in the frame would eliminate all of the uncertainty that, you know, is there and it would provide you a complete answer in an enumerator study. This is the most important, uh, you know, characterization or characteristic of an enumerator study. It's the most important. It's the most important to remember. It's the most important to, um, you know, highlight. When I was talking about population of Idiki, right, and I was talking about the blood pressure of people in Idiki, and I said, okay, um, <clears throat> if I'm able to sample each and every person of that 11.1 lakh or whatever nine lakhs, and you know, get to get their blood pressure reading, then I eliminate all the uncertainty that is there regarding what the blood pressure of the people in the population is. Hence, a hundred percent sample of the units. For example, even in this batch of bulbs, if you sample all the bulbs, then you remove all uncertainty regarding what the outcome is going to be. The method of choice to reduce uncertainty, hence, is to re increase the sample size. So if you have higher uncertainty, you can increase the sample size to reduce the low, uh, you know, uncertainty. 
and so on and so forth. An analytical study on the other hand focuses on obtaining information from the system or process under study and taking action to improve it in the future. So here you don't have a well-defined population frame first of all and even if you are to let's say say for example um, <clears throat> a good example of this is a production process in a company. So let's say you produce um, <clears throat> you know a particular type of product and uh, you want to see whether uh, that particular product or the introduction of that product is something that is going to increase your profits right. So. Um, the point is that even if you study this product um, in one setting, you cannot say for sure that you know this product is going to do well in all the settings, right? So let's say you say, okay, um, in you know two types of demand, I'm going to study the you know pro uh, product and its supply, and I'm going to conclude about what it's going to be like in the real world out there. But even if you do it for all two, or even if you do it for all ten within your company, you cannot reduce all of the uncertainty regarding this. So the product development um, is is dependent upon so many other factors that you cannot reduce the uncertainty just by increasing your sample size. The certain amount of uncertainty which will remain, which is to do with what it is that you are studying itself. You are studying something which is the development of a process. You're not studying. Um, you know, you're not answering a statistical question. You're not, you're not inferencing for a population based upon a sample. You are actually understanding or trying to attempting to understand the population itself. So in this case, um, <clears throat> you know, um, in an analytical study, your your population frame may not be well defined. Um, the best example of this is product development over time. And again, the most important point to highlight is that even 100% units of the frame are inconclusive about the future performance of this process, right? So that's it for this video. I'm going to stop here. Um, in the next video, we are going to be starting with measures of location and uh, we are going to do them for different kinds of data.